practice test four. Section one. In this section, you will hear a conversation between a visa officer and an applicant. You have thirty seconds to read the questions first. Good morning, visa office. How can I help you? Good morning. I'd like to apply for a visa to Australia, please. Certainly, sir. I'll just get a form, and then I'll need to take some details down. Okay? Here we go. Right. Can I have your name, please? Yes, it's Akamura, Kelly Akamura. How do you spell that, please? K E double L. No, no, your family name, please. Oh, sorry. It's O K A M U R A. O K A M U R A, and your address? Apartment one o six, Kingston Street, Hawaii. Kingston Street, Hawaii. Yes, that's correct. So you're an American? Actually, I was born in Japan, but moved to Hawaii six years ago. And can I have your age, please, Mr. Okamura? I'm thirty-two.、Uh, are you married? Yes, I am. My wife's Chinese. And will your wife accompany you to Australia? Yes, she will. In fact, that's the reason we want to go. Her sister lives in Sydney. And do you have any relatives living in Australia? I used to have an uncle, but he died several years ago. Now there's only my sister-in-law and my wife's cousin. So the purpose of your trip is to visit your wife's relatives. Am I correct? Well, not exactly. Mainly because I have my own trading company, and I will be looking for business opportunities. Although I do want to do some travelling as well. You know, see some of the sights, that sort of thing. Although I don't intend to work in Australia. And your wife? What will she be doing? She'll be studying English. She wants a student visa. And how long do you plan to stay? About one year, I guess. Well, I'm afraid a standard tourist visa is only valid for thirty days. Although in your case, we can issue you with a business visa. Business visas last for six months, but you will be able to renew it. We can give your wife a twelve-month visa, though. Six months is okay. So what do I need to do now? Come along to the office any time during weekdays, but it must be office hours. We close at five thirty, and bring along two passport-sized photos and your passport, of course. Your wife will also need two photos, so that's four passport-sized photos in total. Okay. Thank you for your help. Bye. Bye. That is the end of section one. You will have half a minute to check your answers. Section two. You are going to hear an introduction to the facilities and regulations of the main university library. You will hear three different speakers describe different aspects of the library. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to twenty. Now, listen to the conversation carefully and answer questions eleven to twenty. Hello, my name's John Giles. It's good to see you all here for this part of your orientation to the university. Libraries can be complicated and frightening places for new students, and my job's to make you feel welcome, show you how you can find your way around. And introduce you to people who can give you further information and advice about using the library. 
I'll give you a general introduction to the printed materials. Then Susie, who you will meet in a few minutes, will talk about our multimedia services. And finally, Jonathan Freeland, our head librarian, will outline the rules and regulations you must observe as library users. First, though, on behalf of my colleagues and myself, I want you to know that we are all at your service. Unlike many libraries, we insist that all our librarians have an additional qualification in at least one of the subjects taught in the university. You will find librarians who are specialists in science, social sciences and humanities. Most of our staff are also currently doing research and thus up to date with the periodical and internet literature as well as the books. The second advantage we enjoy here is that all our books and periodicals are available from this building. Some of them have to be ordered from our underground stores known as the stacks but you don't have to visit more than one building to find the materials you need. This is because we are purpose built. Now, how do you find your way around? As you no doubt saw in the entrance hall, there is a plan of the library showing you where the books and periodicals can be found for any particular subject. We keep the books and periodicals for each subject on the same floor. So, for instance, environmental sciences are colour-coded green and are housed on the ground floor towards the front. Geography is colour-coded brown and can be found on the ground floor towards the back of the building. Each room is organised on the same plan. Reference books, which cannot be taken out of the library, are found at the far end of each room, near the librarian's desk, or station as we call it. Next to them, on the right, are periodicals for the last two years. The rest of the shelves contain general books on the subject. These can be borrowed. Lastly, the domestic arrangements. Seating in the library is of two kinds. Rectangular tables for up to six people and individual study booths known as carols. No, not Christmas carols. At every seat there is a PowerPoint for a laptop computer. There is also a panel which lights up to tell you when a book you have ordered is ready for collection from the librarian's desk. After all that hard work, you'll be ready for something to eat. And there are slot machines on every floor where you can buy food and drink. In the basement is a cafeteria where you can order fast food such as pizza, hamburgers and also fish and chips, salad and fruit. You mustn't bring food and drink into the reading rooms though. Ah, here's Susie Wallace to tell you about the high-tech facilities of the library. Thanks John. Don't worry, this isn't going to require a degree in systems engineering to get the hang of. Anyway, with computers and audio systems, the best way to learn is by doing. But here's a few tips to get you started. If there's anything else you want to know, each piece of equipment has a manual explaining how to use it, and either I or Elaine, my very capable assistant, will be on hand to get you sorted out. First off, I'd like you all to follow me over to the Multimedia Centre. You have to come through this room to get to it in any case. Then gather round and I'll talk about each piece of equipment as we get to it. Right, here we are. Now. The Multimedia Centre, or MMC for short, houses all the computer facilities you'll need for your degree studies and your language learning. Many of you are studying electronics or similar subjects. We have terrific facilities for learning CAD, Computer Aided Design, for you non technies Some leading companies have donated equipment and state-of-the-art software packages. That's a spin-off from our thriving Industry Links programme. Many of you will be going on for your job experience. But to get back to the point, we have 44 PC terminals and 6 Macs. The Macs are loaded with fantastic software for you, art and design and textile design students. Over here, you can see our two widescreen TV monitors. They can receive broadcasts in most Asian and European languages, as well as English. For English language news, we encourage you to use the Student Union TV room, so that those who are learning other languages can use these. Some useful broadcasts come at awkward times, so if you get a note from your academic advisor on a form we'll give you, we can tape up to two hours a week for you. In a moment, I leave you to explore on your own. But here's our head librarian to say a brief word about library regulations. Good morning. I'm sorry to sound like a police officer, but there are a few rules we all need to observe for the benefit of everybody. 
Courtesy to staff and other library users comes high up the list. Second, the security and safekeeping of materials is essential. All library items are electronically tagged. If the beeper goes off as you leave, you must return to the checkout desk. You are not allowed to bring any bags, packages or outdoor clothing into the reading rooms. You must leave them in the lockers outside in the corridor. You must take reasonable care of library materials while they are in your possession and return them within two weeks of borrowing them. Failure to return them on time without a good reason will result in a fine. When you register to join the library, you will get a copy of the full rules and you must sign this to say that you obey them. That is the end of section 2. You will have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. In Section 3, you will hear a conversation about shopping. Masahiro is an international student who has just arrived from Japan, and Anna and Will are doing some shopping with him. You have some time to read questions 21 to 26 first. Listen to the first part of the conversation now and answer questions 21 to 26. Here we are, guys. I'm going to stop by Bergner's first. I might just get lucky today. Who knows? Some of their dresses might be on sale. Bergner's? It's a fairly well-known department store. Sort of like Penny's. They've got some quality stuff. Do you want to check it out? Why not? I need to get something for Lisa's birthday. She's into name brands. Any suggestions? A Gucci handbag or a Calvin Klein t-shirt might be nice. Designer perfume is another option, which reminds me. I have a 15% discount coupon for learners and pennies. I hardly ever shop at learners. I'm not that big on women's clothing. I rarely shop at pennies. So go ahead and use the coupon if you can. Here they are. Thanks a lot, Will. That's really very thoughtful of you. My pleasure, ma'am. Oh, no. I was supposed to give Liz a buzz an hour ago. Hope I have a quarter. Need a nickel? Actually, I don't have anything but pennies in change. Does any of you have a dollar in change? Sorry, I don't. But I do have 35 cents on me. Will that be OK for the phone call? Great. I really appreciate it. I'll make it quick. Do you guys want to go ahead? Well, wait. Just don't forget us. I won't. Why don't we just meet here in 30 minutes? Sounds good. I guess I'll just look around. Can I help you, sir? No, thanks. I'm just looking. Well, just out of curiosity, how much is that necklace? $29.99. Really? My sister's birthday is tomorrow. She loves jewellery. I just wasn't sure I could afford it. You'll find that a lot of our stuff is amazingly affordable. Well, that's certainly nice to know. I'll take it. It's a good choice. I'm sure she'll love it. Let's hope so. Cash or charge, sir? Uh, charge, please. Do you accept Discoverer? Yes, we do. Great. That comes to thirty-one ninety-nine with tax. Please sign next to X. Do you need some help, sir? Well, I'm looking for... let's see... I've forgotten the name again. It's used to make fresh coffee. A coffee maker? That's right. Well, we have a few in kitchenware, which is upstairs. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, there you are, Mashahiro. What did you get? Just a simple coffee maker. Good choice. And you, Will? Find anything interesting? A necklace for Stephanie's birthday. Lucky her. Did you get anything? Just a couple of silly earrings that I liked. I did a lot of window shopping. That can't hurt. True. Well, do you guys need anything else from this place? One last thing. Oh no, I've forgotten what you call it. 
Just describe it, and we'll probably figure out what it's called. It's a crystal container for flowers with long stems. I need to get one for my mum. Oh, a vase! That's it. They should have a bunch in giftware. Let's go to get one. I'm going to have to stop by Jewel on my way home. Is that okay with you guys? I'm almost completely out of groceries. No problems. I could pick up a couple of things too. Look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now you will hear the rest of the conversation. As you listen, answer questions number twenty-seven to thirty. Hi, Masha Hero. How's it going? Fine, I guess. How about you? Busy. Guess who's coming our way? Hi, guys. What's up? Nothing much. We just ran into each other. That's nice. So, Masha Hero, how's the coffee maker working? Actually, it doesn't work well. It was a waste of money. I guess I should have shopped around for a good one. Why don't you take it back? I'd like to, but I've misplaced the receipt. Well, if it's any consolation, my shopping wasn't all that great either. I wish I'd never bought Stephanie a necklace. Just last night, she was telling me how she wished she had Liz Taylor's new perfume. She did not like my gift at all. That makes three displeased shoppers. Guess what? The camera I bought and shipped to Mike just this morning is now on sale. It's a pity that I bought it then. Then again, I guess I shouldn't complain. It was a good buy, even though I didn't get the best deal on it. Anyway, Masha Hero, I suggest you look for that receipt and just go to the complaints department and say I'd like to exchange this, please. It's as simple as that. And Will, it's not too late for you to ask for a refund. That is the end of section three. You now have thirty seconds to check your answers. Section four. You are going to hear a short talk about the banks in Britain. As you listen, complete the statements by writing no more than three words in the spaces provided. Now you have some time to read questions thirty-one to forty first. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for turning up today to this short talk I'm going to give on student banking. Many of you are unfamiliar with the way banks work in this country, and today's talk should give you a few starting points. Well, as you probably know, you'll need to open a bank account while you're here. The safest place to keep your money is in a bank. Choose one that is near where you study. All the major banks in Britain offer special facilities for students. And we'll be only too happy to explain how to open an account. The most useful type of account is a current account. You can pay in money received in any form, and then draw it out when you need it by using your checkbook. Writing out checks in their name can make payments to other people. If you want to draw out cash for yourself, make the check payable in your own name or to cash. A check crossed with two parallel lines is even safer. As it must be paid into a bank account, payment by cross check has the added advantage that when the person to whom you have given the check presents it at a bank, it will eventually come back to your bank and provide proof of payment. Most people now ask their bank to supply only ready crossed checks. Most banks don't make charges if you keep more than a certain amount of money in your account. However, 
You shouldn't overdraw on your account. Withdraw more money than you have in without the bank's permission. If you borrow money from the bank, there will be an interest charge. You will also have to pay a small charge to convert foreign currency paid into your bank into sterling. If you have more money than you need for month to month expenses, it is a good idea to open a deposit account for some of it where it can earn interest. This interest is taxable, but if your bank knows that you are not normally resident in Britain, then you do not pay tax on it. You can't pay by cheque on a deposit account, and to withdraw money, you should give the bank seven days notice or you'll lose seven days interest. When you have established yourself as a satisfactory customer with the bank, they can issue you with a cheque card. This is really an identity card which guarantees that correctly written cheques up to the value of £50 will be honoured by the bank. A cheque card can be very useful as many shops and enterprises, particularly in London and the cities, will not accept a cheque unless a cheque guarantee card backs it. You can also use it with your cheque book to draw up to £50 cash from almost any bank in Britain. If you also ask for a Euro cheque card, this can be used in the same way to draw cash from most banks in Europe. Many banks provide dispensing machines, generally set in the wall of a bank outside, where you can draw cash when the bank is crowded or closed. Provided you are a satisfactory customer, the bank can issue you with a cash card, which allows you to draw up to £100 a day. That is the end of section 4. You will have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of practice test 4.